Welcome to our Saturday simulcast. The legendary Tom Deanhart joins me as we will talk some spring football, which will open up on Monday, March the 19th. And is that date is correct? I believe that's right. No, it's the 18th. No, it's no, Tuesday. It's on Tuesday. The 19th. You, you, I've had that date put in my, put in my uh, brain and can't seem to get it out. But Tom, uh, obviously Ryan Walter's second spring ball uh, you've had some pretty detailed conversations with them, certainly last uh, uh, for the Boilermaker Alliance. But your sense going into this, uh, uh, he seems like a coach that's uh, like any coach, ready to get him out and get him on the field, so to speak. But a lot of new faces as they look uh, to start the, that 15 practice swing starting on Tuesday. Yeah, you're right. Um, a lot of newness here, Alan. So keep that roster at the ready. <laughs> um 15 portal guys are here now. Um, the kicker from East LA will arrive in May. So you got the 15 portal guys. You got 13 other early enrollees, yeah. 11 freshmen, two junior college transfers. So yeah, do some of your West Side math, Alan. How many people is that? 20, is that 26? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> make make Mr. DeYoung proud. There but, you go. <laughs> But, yeah, yeah, a lot of new faces, Alan. And I tell you what, um, I think for me and a lot of program watchers, there's two positions of, I think, of, 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 of the most interest. And, and both happen to be on the offensive side of the ball for me. The line and the receiving core. Yeah. Um, you know, yes, Purdue ended up running the ball pretty well last year, Alan. If you look at the final stats. But there were still the same issues in short yardage situations and in the red zone. Those have been well documented. Anybody who's watched Purdue football, going back to the Brom era, knows when, it, when it's time to get real physical and tough to get that one yard, that one tough yard. Alan, when everybody in the stadium knows you're going to run the football, can you run the football? Pretty you <laughs> can't. Well, they think they've gotten much bigger, and they have gotten much bigger. That's number one. I think they got some decent talent, too, out of the portal, Alan. Yeah. I think uh, the four portal linemen they got, I think two are probably going to start. I think the kid from Ball State, Corey Stewart, maybe the best of them all, first team all Mac guy. I think he'll be your left tackle. And look for DJ Wingfield from New Mexico to start, um, probably at a guard slot. So watching the offensive line and the receiving core, Allen, pretty lost. I think it was six scholarship receivers in the portal. Their top three pass catching receivers all left guys like Dion Burks, Abdur Rahman Yashin, and TJ Sheffield. Purdue responded, <clears throat> bringing in three Porter wideouts, two from Georgia, one from UCLA. And Allen in May, a junior college receiver, will get here, a kid named Leland Smith, who they like a lot too. But for the guys on campus now, the two guys from Georgia in particular, C.J. Smith to Nylon Morissette, uh, everybody's excited about C.J. Smith, Allen. He, he's, he's supposed to be super fast, can take the top off a of defense. So receiving core, offensive line, Two areas with a lot of new talent, Alan. Two areas with, with a lot to prove and develop this spring. Yeah, I don't know how you do it to keep these guys. That, that must be your that West Side education again. That telepathy. No, Alan, I don't know. <laughs> it means it means I no. I was gonna say it means I don't have a life. No, I love, <laughs> you know I I love it. I've always loved pretty football. I love football in particular, but especially pretty football. So it's fun. It's fun tracking these guys. And Alan, as you know, it's been fun. I've got a chance to visit with these portal guys. Yeah. And, you know, once you talk to somebody, you feel like you have a, a little at least better, uh, you know, basic rudimentary understanding of them. So they, they, all, they, they all seem like good guys, too. Yeah. Your impression, uh, and you've, you've, you've outlined that impression of those guys earlier, but, you know, it just is such a it – is, it is a time where you've got to get to – you got to get that make this marriage work quickly, and Ryan yeah. Walters and staff will be doing that. But just talk about the fact that you know you said you've had a chance to talk to some of these portal guys, but just how do you, how you think they can adjust, and uh, they've got to have some level of excitement, obviously being mm -hmm. out here on campus and working out and getting ready to go. And a lot for a lot of them, it's their chance. You know, they they yeah. were at places like Georgia. Uh, mm -hmm. Where they weren't get, weren't getting up the depth chart as far as they wanted to. Now there's their chance to show what they can do. Is that your overall riding sense with a lot of these guys? Yeah, everybody wants to play, Alan. Yeah, go back to your tenure playing for Bill Berry, <laughs> and you wanted to play. Everybody wants to play, and I didn't. <laughs> Very frustrating if you're not playing. You do all that practice, practice, you don't get the reward of playing. 
And these are some talented guys, Alan, make no mistake about it. Um, uh, guys, for one reason or the other, weren't able to get on the field at a place like Georgia. Um, and they see an opportunity at Purdue. So uh, they're going to get that opportunity, Alan. And um, th these are players that typically never would have come to Purdue to begin with. Yeah. NIL has changed all that, Alan. <clears throat> NIL has changed all of that. Purdue can get guys of this ilk to come to West Lafayette, um, not just the receivers, but I think maybe the best portal addition of all could be, not to put pressure on the kid, but I'm going to anyway, I think the best portal addition of all could be another kid from Georgia, the cornerback, Nylon Green. Um, that that's that's and that looks like it'd be a special cornerback. Maybe he's your shutdown cornerback. So uh, yeah, a chance for Purdue to get talent like this in West Lafayette. And Allen talking to Ryan Walters about two or three weeks ago in his office. Um, he understands the pressure on him. He knows he's not a good coach if he doesn't have good players. Yeah. And uh, he's a very refreshing guy to talk to. He gets it. His, 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 it's a simple stuff. He actually verbalizes it. He devotes a lot of time to helping the collective raise money because he knows it's important to have a robust collective if they want to attract these type of players out of the portal. He said last year they didn't have quite a, the war chest they have this year. Weren't able to get all the players they wanted. Well, this year that changed, Alan. And at least from the you're looking at resumes, it looks like they got some pretty talented guys. Yeah, well said. All right. One, obviously in spring ball, you always focus on the quarterback. Hudson Card will be healthy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, want to keep him healthy throughout spring ball, heading into that season opener late August against Indiana State. What about, and I, and I haven't really asked you about this, but about backup quarterback. Any sense of where where they might be going there? We saw, of course, both the two of them play against Northwestern last year. Uh, when Card was out, but uh, this is a good time to develop those guys. Uh, any sense for what uh, who may have the inside track to be Card's backup uh, at this point, or is it too early to tell? Yeah, usually the most popular guy on campus, isn't it? <laughs> the backup quarterback. But you're right. Um, first of all, Hudson Card. Everybody will tell you, well, the second year in, in a system in a program is when you should see your most improvement. Well, this will be Hudson Card's second year. And time and again, if you look at other portal quarterbacks at other schools, Alan, that second year at, at their school, they really took a big step up. So I think that's the hope for Hudson Card here moving forward. But, yeah, who is going to be his backup, Alan? Uh, those same two uh, uh, reserve quarterbacks return, Bennett Meredith, who came from Arizona State, and then Ryan Brown, who will be a redshirt freshman this year. You know, Meredith started against Northwestern. Brown came off the bench. They rotated. But the final stats, and I think just the eyeball test, Alan, most would agree that Ryan Brown probably played a little yeah. bit better. And when push came to shove late in the game, they put Ryan Brown back out there for consecutive drives. So I think because of that, and just talking to some people, I think he has a slight edge, Alan, certainly not a big edge over Bennett Meredith. That would be sort of a fun little battle to watch. Uh, you always have to have that number two QB ready, I think. I did this stat a while ago, Alan. The last time Purdue had a quarterback start every game in a season was 2016, David Blau. You know, be it injury or ineffectiveness, Purdue's always had to start at least two quarterbacks every year since then. But I tell you what, Alan, the guy to watch is the early enrollee freshman, Marcos Davia from Texas. He looks good getting off the bus and walking through the door, Alan. He looks like an NFL quarterback, 6'4". He needs to tone his body up, get in a little bit better shape, but he checks all the boxes, Alan. Again, he's just a true freshman. Um, I think they want to get a look at him. Maybe he's your quarterback of the future. Maybe he's your quarterback next year, Alan. They do have a kid coming in or committed for 25, a kid named Sawyer Anderson. Uh, total opposite of Marcos. He's like 5'10", yeah. 190. Marcos is 6'4", 240. But anyway, Marcos Devi is a guy to watch. Um Probably not going to be your number two quarterback out of the gate for obvious reasons, but it'll be interesting to see if they can get him some work and, and if maybe he can impress them and, uh, and give them something to look forward to moving forward here. On your 3 2 1 this week, you wrote about Cadron Jenkins as an inside linebacker. Yeah, that. Really a lot of intrigue in that position just because you have Jenkins and, of course, uh, Nick Scorton uh, took off with the transfer mm -hmm. portal to Texas, uh, Texas AM. And yeah, yeah. my point is, 
Jenkins is a guy who was an all Big Ten level guy last year, yeah. one of the leaders in sacks. Uh, talk about what you see from that, that position switch and what uh, – you know some of that intrigue on that defense. I mean, you've got a good you got a good place to start with Jenkins and Dylan Thieneman. and going to yeah. have some new faces there. But talk about uh, what that means to have Jenkins at that position if you think that's where he's going to end up. Yeah, that that's where he's going to start, Alan. Yeah, I feel pretty confident in saying that he's going to be your number one inside linebacker. Um, I, I think for a couple reasons. I think um, for him personally, Alan. I think if he has any hopes of playing in the NFL. It's probably going to be more at a linebacker spot. You know, he's only six foot one. Yeah. Uh, he's not going to be a defensive end in the NFL. He's not going to be an outside linebacker in the NFL, Allen. His only hope, I think, is to, to be an inside guy, sort of like a Jawan Bentley, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's going to have to play on two feet all the time, Allen. He's going to be playing in the box with a lot of bodies around him, which is new. Um, but I think they like his playmaking ability. At the heart of the defense, you can't run away from him, Allen. He's going to be in the middle of the defense. We all know the type of player he is. I, I go back to Mark Hagan and the way he would just brag on how Kydron Jenkins, the heart he had, the toughness he had, never let injury keep him back, just the ultimate warrior. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to bet against him. And he's going to bring a lot of juice to that position. Um, honestly, Alan, that's a spot that hasn't hasn't been had, had a lot of overwhelming talent. And he'll be a big upgrade, I think, as your number one inside linebacker. And I think they feel confident, obviously, in the other. They're calling them rush ins this year, Alan. They're not outside linebackers. They're mm -hmm. rush ins, and they feel confident in their rush ins. Will help the sophomore from, from Carmel, Indiana. I'm going to go ahead and say maybe he's a future star. Boy, yeah. Alan, six foot six, two forty. He's going to get bigger and stronger. He's going to look like an NFL player soon, if not now. And they got three guys from the portal. C.J. Madden, another Georgia kid. They got a kid from Boston College, Sheeta Soleil. And they got a small school kid, out from Franklin College. Mike <laughs> Carmen, Mike Carmen's alma mater. Oh, yeah. They're going to name. They're going to rename the college after Mike, I think. <laughs> His name is Jiro Ojada. He's from Carmel, Indiana. I, I, I've got some reports that he's looked really good in winter workouts. You know, he, nobody has pads on. So some guys look great in tank top and shorts. I know you always look good in tank top and shorts. <laughs> Until they get those pads on, as you know, Alan, we'll see. But they, they, they seem they seem to be pretty encouraged by him. And so they got yeah. three portal out rush ends as well. I talked about Will Help. So they feel pretty good about their, some of their depth there and their potential. So, um, yeah, that's another spot on defense to watch are those rush ends. The three newcomers in particular. And I talked a little bit about the cornerback, Nylon Green. Um, I think Nylon Green, Markevious Brown will be your number one cornerback tandem, Allen. They have another portal cornerback from Colorado, uh, Kendrick Breedlove, who I think is going to be the number one star spot, sort of like a nickelback. And if people are really interested and want to go get deep in the weeds on this, I posted on, uh, on Thursday a projected two-deep defensive depth chart. And on Wednesday, I posted a projected two-deep offensive depth chart. I feel pretty confident if that's about as accurate as you're going to find at this point. So kind of give you a little better idea of how these guys are going to line up, at least coming into spring ball, Allen. Now remember, too, there's going to be some guys very limited, maybe yeah. guys coming off injury, coming off surgery. I know the tight end, George Burns, is going to be out probably with a broken foot. Uh, Slim Turner Muhammad got hurt again. So be mindful of that. Some of these guys um, are going to be on the men. Let's be honest, Allen. A lot of times these coaches don't want to put their best players in jeopardy getting hurt in the spring. So – I uh, always have to be mindful of that and never take too much out of what you see in spring football. As we all know, it, it can be a real skewed look at, at personnel. But nonetheless, Al, it's a chance for us to whet our appetite and get a look at some of this new personnel in particular. One guy that is coming off injury as well and was made a huge impress impression in year one for at least through half the season, Max Clear. Yeah. Uh, he may be one of those guys that I would think might be limited, but I don't know. But uh, again, produced in a lot better position at the tight end position than one would th one would think mm -hmm. just by looking at it. With with the, with the Burns and Clair certainly coming back and being ready to go, they're going to be great. I think Alan um, Max Clair was probably going to be a freshman All American. Remember that great start he got off to? Then he got oh. off, I think in late September. Probably I think he was on pace for about a fifty catch year. Um, tough guy too, smart, tough kid. 
and uh, George Byrne. Boy, I tell you what, Alan. Yeah. We saw him late to the IU game, basically, right? And right. he's really good. You know, long lift athlete, can run, 6'5". He was a hurdler in high school. Again, he, he broke his foot this winter. But those two guys are going to be special, I think. And then Drew Bibber, um, yeah. I think a redshirt junior. Drew Bibber they like as well. None of these yeah. guys are big inline tight ends, Al, that are going to weigh 270 and be like a de facto tackle. They're more guys you'd even split out wide which they like to do in this offense. And they have a true freshman who's here as well, um, Tavion Galloway, who I think they like is a lot too. So there's a lot of talent there at a position where, of course, remember, they lost Garrett Miller. He sort of surprisingly transferred to Texas A&M. But, Alan, he never really got he never really got back in gear last year coming off that injury. And uh, I think they have more than enough talent to compensate for his departure. Yeah, interesting. It's going to be a – a lot of analysis going on, uh, et cetera. Now, you, your access will be, as always, is, and, and, and with Ryan Walters and, and with coaches anymore, <laughs> you get in to see the see him run around a little bit. What Talk, talk about yeah. that and talk a little bit about the schedule, too. 15 practices, a mm-hmm. spring game before the end of spring yeah. practice, which I think is a first for Purdue football. Maybe not, but, uh, uh, they, but talk a little bit about the schedule starting on Tuesday. Yeah, they're going to go Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, for the most part. And um, they're going to be on the field by 9 a.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays, off by about 11. Then on Friday, they're going to go at 5 p.m., more of a little late later practice on Fridays. As far as media access goes, it's only going to be on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Just like in last year, spring ball and training camp, the media will be allowed to watch the first – whatever they deem, five or ten periods of practice, then they'll be asked to leave, Alan. <laughs> and then we'll come back and do their interviews. And Ushered out the door, right? There you go. <laughs> and so that'll be the – and then Friday there's no access at all. So we'll only be able to be part of two practices a week. And um, Ryan Walters is going to talk to the media once a week, Alan. And then, of course, we'll also have sprinkled in their position coaches and players – I have still have a schedule worked out as far as that goes, but we'll get Walters once a week, which is kind of cool. I always like talking to the head coach. I could talk to him. Yeah. yeah I love talking to Brom. When, when we got Brom, yeah. it was always good for obvious reasons. So that's the week's schedule. And then the spring game, April 13th right. at noon in Ross H Stadium. Of course, they did not have a spring game last year. I posted this week, Alan, that conversation I had with Ryan Walters. Him sort of previewing spring football. He talked about it, Alan. He said he only had about 60 guys last year at this time. Not enough personnel to really have a spring game. Much more robust roster this year. So fans can look forward to a spring game in Ross Aid. In the last practice, April 18th. So and they'll be wrapped up, my friend. It'll be a Grand Prix weekend. <laughs> um, we know what that's like around here. I got yeah. married. I went and still had the carnival in the North Ross Aid State. <laughs> And uh, sometimes that, that was where I had to get to my, got to meet my fifth grade girlfriend who dumped me right after the carnival. So there, <laughs> there you go. You dumped you after you got off the tilt the world. Oh well, I had I had a paper out, so I had some cash. So that that's why only liked thing, you. only thing, only thing I had going for me. Uh, it went all down. Cotton, well. You're getting her cotton candy, corn dogs, and. Oh, and, those big, and, and those big Bub's Daddy things. Oh, I love Bub's they Daddy. Were, oh, they were great. Uh, all I different kinds of flavors. All different flavors too. Oh yeah, I had seventeen cavities by the time I was done. But no, we'll look forward to your cut. Your, 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 nobody does it better than you, and we're we look forward to that. I know there's a lot of basketball, and Tom and I are, are very interested. Are That's very what's crazy, interested. you know. All, 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 too much, everything's going on at once. I know people for obvious reasons. This basketball team's off the charts, but trying to squeeze in some football here or there. But maybe basketball is going to go on for three more weeks, Alan. Let's see. It's going to be. I'm like everybody else. Uh, Really eager to see where this goes, and it's it's a very oh, no time for the fan base. Yeah, no doubt, it's going to be fun. And uh, we've been uh, Tom and I've had a few few games this year in Mackey where we've sat and enjoyed just uh-huh. watching them play. This has been a great team to watch. And Brian Newbert, Mike Carmen uh, will yeah. be bringing all that to you this weekend. Yeah, uh, assuming by the time you watch this that uh, Purdue is still in the tournament, they'll play either they'll play on Friday and then uh, potentially Saturday and Sunday. Then, of course, uh, selection Sunday coverage as well. Mm-hmm. want to thank the Union Club Hotel. I want to thank Tom Dean Harper, uh, also the good folks there. Uh, we appreciate them. And a reminder, you can like this uh, Zoom cast. You can subscribe. 
to, and you can read all of Tom's work and our wonderful message boards, Knucklehead Center, yes. we in our great community. We would highly encourage that we do actually write stories, Tom and Brian especially, uh, but we also uh, want you to become a member. It's a great time to do that. And uh, we'll look forward to a lot of coverage as we head into the spring, summer. Uh, it'll it'll continue on as we get head into the head into uh, not only the end of basketball, but obviously the the heart the second year of Ryan Walters the twenty twenty four campaign and and that welcoming USC. Tom's going to get to go to Oregon this year, Oregon State. He's yeah. they're not going out west, or the Ducks are coming this way. But uh, yeah, I, I know I know that's going to be fun. It's be fun. Ch- love Chandler. I love yeah. I love um. I've been to Corvallis a few times. I love Corvallis. But, Alan, to your point about the message board, I tell you what, that is the heartbeat. Yeah. Good and bad. It's I think it's the heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. If you're not on that message board, everything, every every little burp that happens in Purdue Athletics, it gets on that message board somehow. I mean, it's the, some of it may be a little, uh, you know, uh, um, contrived or, or exaggerated or maybe a lot of rumor mongering. But anyway – it's a community. I'm always, I'm always, I got to be on there and check out. And sometimes there's things on there that catch my eye. I go, whoa, I, I better look into this. So yeah. my point is, you know, it's, it's a place people love to go after games. I want to share my two cents on the game. I want to see what people think about the game. People love to share their opinion of what just happened. And, and I'm always amazed at the information that gets on there and some of the good opinions that, that people actually form. It's a, it's a place. I think if you're a Purdue fan, you want to be. Yeah. Well said. All right. Uh, We'll bring this to an end. Thanks so much, Tom. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next week on Saturday Simulcast. Again, thank the Union Club Hotel. A lot to pay attention to on goldenblack.com.